Hello and welcome to my another technical deep dive presentation and demo on Microsoft Defender for Identity. Since this video would not only cover the offering, the deployment, but also several use cases, several attack simulation and how Microsoft Defender would react to it, detect it, uh, how you could do the investigation and how you could possibly prevent a major security incidents in your environment. Um, I have decided to uh, divide this video into two parts to keep it uh, under control from the time perspective. The first video, first part that uh, we are, you're gonna watch today would be around the offering, the architecture and the deployment. And the second part of this video would be going more around attack simulation. So you will see how a perpetrator builds an attack, how does it go around it, and how can he actually create a major security incidence in your environment, including uh, identity theft, right? So that's the result, uh, that's the reason this is in two parts, and I can promise you this would be a very interesting and absorbing um, video and demo as all of my are. And hopefully you would like it and hopefully you would be able to use this service in your environment. Now, before we dive into this uh, video and demo, Microsoft Defender for Identity is not a new product. Microsoft launched this product about four years back and that time they named it as Azure ATP, which stands for Azure Advanced Threat Protection. As the time progress and as all of us know, Microsoft has a habit to changing the name of the product and now they have renamed this Azure ATP to Microsoft Defender for Identity, right? And many of you who have been watching my videos or who have been following me, uh, I created a video on Azure ATP about four years back when it was in its preview mode, not even in a public preview, private preview mode. And that video already is uh, in my channel. But since changes have been made and the, this product is now branded as Microsoft Defender for Identity, I decided to add this new video into the series of identity access management videos that I have already created. Many of you already know that I have uh, seven videos on identity access management from Microsoft's perspective that deals holistically around all the aspects of identity access management within the Microsoft world, right? And that gives you a holistic picture of Microsoft identity access management. Last week, uh, I added the eighth video in that series of identity access management, which was about the verified IDs, which is a new concept, which is very, very promising. And uh, people are liking that video a lot, right? So um, this is Microsoft Entra, which is a new identity infrastructure that Microsoft has introduced. That video I presented last week. And this week, I'm talking about Microsoft Defender for Identity, right? Now, let's just dive into and try to understand why on the earth we need to use this product, right? Now, as I said, Microsoft Defender for Identity is for Active Directory domain controllers or precisely to monitor your Active Directory. Now. The Active Directory could be running on your on-prem or Active Directory, many organizations have decided to extend it to their cloud, whether it's Azure, AWS, or GCP. So product would work no matter where your domain controllers are located, right? That's the first part I just want to make sure. It's just not only an on-prem solution, but depending on how you leverage your Active Directory domain services, uh, it could work in a hybrid environment as well. And what it does, it actually, honestly speaking, is it's running around four pillars here, which would go around detect, investigate, and respond. And when you do that, you obviously prevent uh, uh, proactively your identity security assessment. And on top of it, you are able to improve your overall security posture for your organization. Now, the as I said, Microsoft Defender for Identity is a cloud service that is running in Microsoft Azure, but actually it is the sensors and the agents are, uh, sensors are running on Active Directory domain controller. So, because once you go deeper into this product, you would find that how much compute requirement would be to do the work that this product is doing. And as a result, 
uh, all the compute requirement, all the configuration requirement, Microsoft has taken the ownership of it and it runs from the cloud. In initial days, when this product was conceived, Microsoft, in my old videos, if you go there for Azure ATP 1 and Azure ATP 2 product, at that time, Microsoft was offering these services to be running on your own infrastructure. But compute was a huge problem because it requires a huge compute and that's how the services, it makes more sense to move these services to the cloud. So you don't have to worry about compute uh, requirements to do this work. And basically what it is doing here, this, these sensors for MDI are running on domain controllers or standalone servers, which we'll see down the road and is monitoring every single network packet that relates to security, right? And that is where it you, provides you the real-time analytics. And you will see the different types of attacks that is possible on your Active Directory domain services. I'm sure many of you would be surprised and rather shocked when I show you that how many attacks are possible on your Active Directory domain services, how many types, and how easy it is to perpetuate that attack. And on top of it, the magnitude and the impact of those attacks in your organization is just unbelievable. I'm sure many of you who are not in the security world would be shocked. I am really using this word, would be shocked to see that, that this is even possible, right? We'll, we'll go into those details and talk about in the later part of our demo, because my video is more geared and focused to show you actually the attacks and detection, right? That is where the value proposition is. That's where you would say, hey, oh my God, I should start using this product now, right? And that's my ultimate goal. So when we talk about detection here, it is doing a real time analytics because it is also using machine learning and behavioral stuff in the background, which you'll see down the road, using the data intelligence, machine learning, and figuring it out by capturing and monitoring your network packet if there is an attack being perpetuated, right? Attacks are built in a very systematic way. It may start slow and it's gradually build it up. And that's what you're seeing. So with this real-time analytics, you are able to detect the attack in a very early stage. And I would use the word in the stage of its infancy when a perpetuator is actually a building attack. If you're able to detect it right there, you can immediately start investigating because now you know that somebody is trying to enter into my network, trying to do something. So you are able to investigate it instantaneously. And as a result, you can respond now. You could do it manual response or you could do an automatic response based on how advanced you are. And once you are taking these three actions, obviously you are preventing a major attack in your organization. You are preventing the identity theft, which is the core, core problem for many of your organization. And especially if any CEO or CFO is listening to that, this should be your concern. How would you avoid identity theft in your environment? And this service can definitely help you to accomplish that to a larger extent, right? There's nothing that can 100% guarantee you anything, but I'm sure that this would really, really help you to steer that direction and steer that discussion with your team members. Now, once we understand this part, let's move forward and say, what is this Microsoft Defender for Identity offers, right? Because unless we understand what it offers, we don't want to use it. And as I said already, that it is using detection based on network traffic analysis and anomalies that is happening in the environment, especially um, uh, around the protocols like NTLM, Kerberos, LDAP, RDP, DNS, and SMB, which are all related to one way or the other to security, right? And some of those protocols are old, so they, they are more vulnerable than others. So that's the reason when we capture these packets, we are capturing it holistically and we are providing a network traffic analysis in real time. The key here is real time, my friends. Now, it's also looking in the behavioral detections, CVE-based detections, tools and signature-based detections. So if you look into the four pillars here around it, so as a result, Network traffic analysis is being done, security events and event tracing is being done, and user behavior analytics, which is machine learning comes into picture, then uh, uh, intelligent data comes into picture, and it is actually looking into the each user behavior, right? For an example, a user need, used to do certain things in a certain way, browse something, do something, access some file services, and all of a sudden he or she starts behaving slightly differently. 
that's where the machine learning will kick in and initiate uh, a notification to that there's something wrong around here, right? And as I said, the focus here is the real-time detection because and real-time detection is happening through cloud so that you don't have to worry about the compute requirement for the services, right? Data enrichment correlations in Azure is happening in real time. And that is the, the core value proposition behind Microsoft Defender for Identity. Let's look at the architecture. Architecture is pretty straightforward and simple, right? Now, in my Visio uh, diagram here, I have given you domain controllers and ADFS servers where you would install the MDI sensor. And trust me, installing MDI sensor is, is very, very straightforward, very simple, very small footprint, very small compute requirements, so you really don't have to worry about it. And as soon as you install the MDI sensor, it starts sending the data, it starts sending the signals to Microsoft Defender for Identity, which captures, captures it, analyzes in real time, as I mentioned in my earlier slides, and start alerting you, notifying you, and allowing you to detect, investigate, right and and uh, prevent the attacks possibly in very early stages now i have not shown you one thing in this diagram that these mdi sensors could also be deployed on a standalone server not on your domain controllers that would require external configuration and you know even collection and network packet collection so that is more work but in general in my past experience working with several organization Installing this MDA sensor on domain controller is pretty easy, simple, and quick, right? So compute resources requirements are very, very minimal, and most of the domain controllers that you are running today should be able to just accommodate installing MDI sensor. It does not add a lot of compute uh, requirements on your existing domain controllers. That's very simple. Then Microsoft Defender for Identity can be integrated and in my viewpoint should be integrated with Microsoft 365 Defender to you know, synchronize your activities, alerts and identity metadata with Microsoft 365 Defender, which is your security center pretty much, which is getting uh, everything from whether is it is from your on-prem or from your cloud or from your endpoint or from Microsoft 365. So that gives you a holistic picture of you know, a single view of your identity along with other security stuff that you're doing in the environment. Moving forward, what are the requirements for MDI or Microsoft Defender for Identity? Obviously, you would need licenses. Most organizations are already might have these licenses. I have given you the details here. It could be EMS E5 or A5 or Microsoft 365 E5. A5, G5, or Microsoft 365, E5, A5, G5 security, right? That's very straightforward. If you don't have it, probably you want to try it. If you already have it, that means you are already, and you're not using MDI, that means you are really, really missing a very important security services in your environment. So if you already own these licenses, I would say this video is really a value add to your security, security posture. Please, please, please. Watch it carefully till the end of the video. Now, you would also need an Active Directory service account because as you know that we are monitoring Active Directory, we are many, we'll be monitoring user behavior, right? We will be seeing what's happening in Active Directory users and groups perspective. So we need an account. So there are two ways to do that. One is that you can have a normal Active Directory user account. He should only be the member of domain user, right? he should not have any privileges because this account would be configured on MDI portal. So you don't want to expose it. But the preferred route is to use the group managed service account. And I would strongly recommend you to use GMSA. I'm not gonna go and talk about a lot about GMSA because video would be long. GMSA group managed service account, you don't have to worry about password rotation, which would be the case with your normal domain user, right? So that's a preferred route. It's very simple and easy to deploy GMSA. It's, it's a piece of cake, to be honest, right? Let me use that word here. It's very, very simple, and I'll show you in my lab how I did that. On top of it, you would need an Azure Active Directory account because, as I said, this identity access management solution is running in cloud in Azure services. So you would need either a security admin role or a global admin Azure Active Directory role. The ports requirement, I have given you the table here. I'm not going to read it. 
Uh, most of the organization already meet this requirement. You don't really need to do something extra unless your organization has decided to block something. But here is, here is what is the ready referral for you for your port requirement. And as I mentioned earlier, the compute requirement is very minimalistic. You need at least two cores and about six gig of RAM or higher, which is most of the normal modern domain controls are already running that. So that's why you should not have that problem. If you need to really do a sizing capacity planning, then you have a Microsoft capacity planning tool here. I have given you the link here that you could use it and plan it in your environment, right? Now, uh, just for reference here, I would attach a link to this DAC in my description of my video. So you have access to this DAC. Moving forward, here is what is the most important part of this video, right? Microsoft Defender for MDI detection. That means these are the different possible attack scenarios that your Active Directory may face, right? And starting from reconnaissance, credential access, literal movement, and persistence. These, are, these have been grouped into these four different categories. I'm not going to read all these different attack vectors here. Rather, I would focus on showing you possibly each of these attack in my lab. And then it will make more sense for you and it will show you the value proposition. If I just keep reading here, it would be a boring uh, video and you would not really get much out of it. So I'm not going to read all this, these bullet points here. This is for your reference. You can watch it and you can use it in your deck. But every, I think 90% of these security possible attacks and detection, I would be able to demonstrate to you in my lab. And that is what the value proposition. All right, so we are in our lab and uh, the first thing that we need to do, it should be quick that to how to deploy a Microsoft Defender for identity. In my viewpoint, the first step is to create an MDI tenant and to create an MDI tenant, very simple thing to do is to go to this URL, which would be HTTPS portal.atp.azure Com. Again, you need to have security admin and global admin rights on your Azure tenant. Once you do that, it will prompt you to sign in. And once you sign in, it would uh, ask you to create it. You could do that. In my lab, I have already done that, so I'm not going to be showing you, but this is where you start. Alternatively, you could also go from security center, and I'll show you in a second. And from security center, you can initiate that process as well. Right? So from Microsoft Defender for Identity. So let's do that. So alternatively, you can log on to security.microsoft.com and I have never tried it from this place, but I believe once you go down into the settings, you will see the identities and here also you can launch the newer version of Microsoft Defender for Identity. And I expect that if once if you have not created a tenant, it would let you prompt you here to create a tenant. I went to the other old route from the you know, the portal.atp.azure.com, but that should be doable here. Once you have configured, uh, once you have created the portal there, right, and also once you have created the tenant, then you can configure it very easily. <clears throat> right, right here, you can install the sensors, you can download the sensors. This is the directory service account. Let me show you into other, other portal quickly. So after you have created your tenant, your URL will become your Active Directory name. For example, my Active Directory name is azentra.atp.azure.com, right? You could go here. Once it shows up here, you can go to the configuration part and you can see the sensors here. So as I said, downloading sensor and installing sensor is pretty straightforward. You download the sensor from here. You get the key here, access key. And once you start installing, it will prompt you for access key as long as you meet all the requirements, compute requirement, .NET 4. Point, I think 4.5 or 4.7 requirements. Your ports are good. You can just install it, right? As you see, I have already installed DC01, which is my domain controller, and that's already running here, correct? Now, you also have to... <clears throat> We talked about the service account, right? Active Directory service account. I'm using a GMSA account, 
which is a group managed service account as an MDGMSA account. It's very easy to configure. It's a two step process. Once you create the root key, Active Directory root key, and then you would run another PowerShell to create the, the group managed service account. After you have done the group managed service account, you need to allow certain, uh, certain activity to get ready. I'll go up over that quickly. So here you will see that I have created this managed service account. Once you provision the managed service account, it will show you in this uh, container here, which is my account MDGMSC, right? Remember that a couple of quick things. I'm not going to go into the detail. MDGMSA or group managed service account is something very similar to like a computer account. You never would ever see its password because password is managed by Active Directory. That's the core value proposition here. And it rotates periodically. You can configure your password rotation of whatever duration you want to put it. Now, since the password are rotated and its password is never exposed, right? So you don't have to worry about changing your services account and service password every single time. And that brings additional security layer to your environment. So you can run it against different services or in our case, we are going to use it. Uh, we are already using it for MDI purpose. So in addition to creation of this GMSA account, we also need to make sure that this GMSA account has adequate rights to do uh, the required work for Microsoft Defender for identity as a service account, right? There are two things in my viewpoint are required. One is that this GMSA account needs to be given at least some read rights on either the organizational unit or at a domain level. I would prefer to be given at a domain level. And the second is that we need to allow this GMSA account to make a, um, you know, a, a SAMR enumeration and security, SAMR stands for Security Account Management Remote Control. So when we say Security Account Management Remoting, that's where we need to allow it to make sure that uh, by enumerating GMSA, it can detect and build the right literal movement path, right? So that's very important. So we need to do that. So let's see what we do for the permissions perspective on the domain. I need to go to the domain level, go to properties, security, advanced and then here I can add and I can select a principal here object type obviously this is a GMSA account so now I need to do MD dash GMSA I have already done that so I'm just showing you here and then you can assign most of them are the read permission let me show you and let me also give you the link to the document there where you would see all the required permissions needs to be done give me a second and here you see these are the required permissions for this GMSA account, right? Only one is reset password, write password, last set. Um, these are the things that you require. And once we are good with this service, this needs to make sure that uh, when you when we configure this, oh no, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going ahead of my game. So this is one thing. Second is that we need to allow the SEMR capability and enumeration, right? So security account management remote. So let me do that. In order, in order to do the SAMR enumeration, I have created a policy called an MDI policy here. And I have excluded domain controllers out of it, which is what I just mentioned, right? So if I go to advanced, and I will see the domain, domain controllers here, and I have explicitly denied apply group policy. So it's not gonna apply to domain controllers. And then what I did here is that for SAMR, uh, um, for the setting here, I have allowed on the computer configuration, Windows setting, security setting, local policies, policies, network access restrict client allowed to make remote calls and I have allowed this identity here. So if you show here, Local policy, users, right? This is the policy. Check this box in and add security. 
leave the, the one that was by default we added the gmsa account here and allowed it right that's all those are the two activities required once you are done you are good good here and then you can go back to the portal and do the remaining configuration so we understand what are the two requirements for the gmsa account one is the permissions most likely at the directory level and second is uh, allowing them the SEMR enumeration, right? We have already done that. Let's go back to our portal. So we have already seen the sensor is configured here. When I go to the directory services account, I have already added the MD GMSA, which I just showed you, which is properly configured, right? Either you can use the group managed services account or you can add a regular service account, right? Which is a domain user, which is simple. Right now, um, what we also need to do here is we can also do the tagging for the sensitive accounts, right? So these are the sensitive account that the different of identity can can more manage. And for an example, I am managing the Jacob Fenske, which is my domain admin. The Azure admin is my also another domain admin, and a SQL admin is my Honey Token account that I'm trying to see of what happens. Similarly, we can also use the Sunny Honey Token account to invite people to try attackers to use the SQL admin account and see what they're trying to do and how vulnerable our Active Directory is, right? So very simple. This is what we already did that. You could also choose devices if you like to see which devices are being attacked and you can exploit and expose them um, from the Honey and you can add the Exchange Server. I don't have Exchange Server in my environment, so I'm going to leave it here. Notification. Right, so you can see I'm sending the notification to my email. You can add as many recipients as you like. And then alert notification also, you're sending it to uh, an email address. You can add and remove it, right? Syslog, if you have syslog, you can configure the syslog for collecting the database, uh, collecting or sending this uh, Microsoft Defender logs to syslog and that could be consumed by other seamed services. Right, very simple to do that. That's, that's all the configuration is. Uh, there was an option for reports, which I'm not seeing on this portal here. Oh, that is on the different portal. Why I don't see it here. Portal redirection, VPN, manage action account. All right, I came back to the, the Defender portal right here instead of security portal at azn.atp.azure.com here i can see the notification language configuration notification that i can send to the email that i showed you there syslog configuration we talked about here is the schedule report that i was talking about summary sensitive group exposing the clear text it can send it and schedule it i am sending it to my email here and then i'm getting the reports so that i can show you here right I forgot to mention one thing when I was talking about the sensitive uh, tags, I showed you about the users, but there is also an option for devices as well as for the groups, right? So you can add here group, I added here a help desk. So if the group modification happens, something changes. For an example, I can also add here uh, additional group here. Like an example, I can add DNS admin or domain admin, right? So that if somebody is modifying and touching these groups, then um, we are good with that, right? And that would take care of this, which I didn't want to forget. So you have that option here, and I just want to show you this option as well. As I mentioned, Microsoft Defender for Identity can be integrated with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, which is what is a recommended path. This is where you do that. You need to do at two places. Once you do this here, you can click on this to get to the Defender for Endpoint portal, and then you can configure here uh, and turn it on, right? And then you are integrating the Visio diagram that I showed you earlier, where it would integrate with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. That integration is done right here, so I just don't want to miss it. And since it is once it is done, there is an option also on the portal that uh, you could. So this should be all good now, momentarily.
We can also do the portal redirection, um, redirected every account in organization from portal.atpazure.com to, to the Microsoft Defender for Identity. I have never tried it so far, so I'm not gonna do this, but that's another option that uh, is available to us. And I have been asked several times about the, the encryption of the connection between the sensor and the backend Azure Cloud Services. And I can ensure you that traffic is also encrypted. So you can feel comfortable when you install the sensor, your data is encrypted when, especially the, the signals that are being sent to backend Azure MDI services, they are all encrypted. So that should put you at a comfort level too. Having said that, I think we have covered the, all the three parts of uh, this video, which was to explain you what the MDI is, what his offerings are, what the architecture looks like. We have also gone into uh, explaining you what the requirements would be. And finally, we have uh, also shown you the deployment part of it. So that concludes this video. But needless to mention that the second video is really, really what the one that you want to see it. Because in the second video, you would really see the attacks being perpetuated. And uh, all these, what I'm showing right now, is a part of those attacks that are being executed on your Active Directory in real time that you would be able to watch it and see how the MDI detects it. And as a result of the detection, as I mentioned, those four pillars, I would focus back there. As a result of detection, you can investigate it in very early and hopefully you can take the remediation activities and tasks and you can prevent a possible identity theft scenario, right? So that's coming up in the second video. Stay tuned. Please, please make sure that you do watch that video and especially from all of my security colleagues and Active Directory colleague, I personally recommend you that video is a must to watch. And I emphasize the word is must to watch because seeing is believing. And when you see these actions, when you see these activities happening, some of you would really be shocked. I, I can assure you that. So please watch the second part of this video, which is gonna be a longer video. And I hope to see you there. Thanks again. Thanks for your time. Uh, appreciate a lot. Please send your valuable comments. That's the only motivation, motivating factor for me. And have a great day, great evening, whatever and whichever part of the world you're watching this video. And take care. Bye-bye.